Hey everyone, Mike Massey here. Just got a uh, basic brake set up here that I thought I'd uh, show you. And consists of two clippered cylinders and some clippered fittings here, a T, uh, tubing, and a um, male end of a shutoff disconnect there. And then out on the ends here, we have uh, some parts from Barry Haig of Superscale. These are again, two and a half inch scale parts for two and a half inch scale truck. They're no longer listed in the catalog. There is some inventory left, but they're pretty much uh, rapidly becoming non-available. But there's nothing here that you couldn't make yourself, uh, that you couldn't machine out of stock. It's all, you know, pretty straightforward stuff. And uh, basically you have uh, this uh, equalizing lever, and then you have uh, brake shoes. Uh, these are aluminum. Uh, he's also made them in bronze before. Aluminum is softer. It gives you a little more of a gummy bite on it. Then you have the uh, hangers, these nice little hanger pieces. Uh, again, all things that you can, uh, you can machine, you can make yourself. And there's some, there's some little threaded, uh, quarter 28 threaded inserts uh, that go uh, inside the uh, equalizing lever. Now, this brake setup is set up for straight air. So all it does is compress the brakes when you add air. And then these, these are what Clippard calls reverse acting cylinders. They spring outwards when you're done. So uh, applying the air brings the cylinders inwards like this, and then they, they come back out when they're done. The whole thing just hangs off of the truck. So when it comes back out, it, it moves equally on both sides. If you wanted to have automatic braking, uh, you could easily do that by just getting the non-sprung uh, double actuating cylinder. This is a single actuating cylinder. So then you could set up all of your different uh, air pressures uh, to work against each other and have fail safe when the you know, car breaks away from the train, if that's to your taste. Uh, I, I like simple air and uh, safety chains uh, works for me. So that's what I'm doing. And now I'll uh, show you uh, what this looks like on a truck. I'll take that away. Okay, I've got the brakes set up on a set of Steve Eastland Pacific Coast Railroad freight trucks, two and a half inch scale. And I just have it hooked up to uh, a test airline and I got a valve. So right now it uh, moves freely and I'll go ahead and uh, actuate the air. And now it's locked up. It's got about 80 pounds in it and it's frozen solid. And I will shut off the supply now. I'm gonna disconnect the supply. Uh, that's the only way I can vent it, but I can also use it to illustrate a point. And it's that uh, the pressure in this very small volume of tubing and the cylinders, it, uh, it just holds really nicely. So uh, the nice thing about clippered stuff, it doesn't leak. The shutoff valve, uh, the connections, the tubing fittings, uh, it all it seals the cylinders, just fantastic. So if you want to leave your brakes set on while you're parked at lunch, especially if there's little kids around, uh, you don't want them to tick off with your train accidentally. This is a good insurance for that. So I like brakes that don't leak. It's not hard to do. You just got to use the right materials, you know, the right parts, and you can have nice leak-free brakes. So now I'm going to uh, vent this. And there it is. Now it's nice and loose again. You can see I've just, I've just given it a little bit of slack, just a tiny bit, so that uh, you know, the more slack you give it, the more sloppy your brakes will be, the longer they'll take to apply. And so it's, it's good to kind of find a, a balance and, and uh, you can adjust that by just adjusting the length of all of this stuff. And I've made that on this truck, I can just do it on one end. I can, uh, I can uh, turn the nuts over there and make it shorter or longer. And here I've uh, flipped the truck over so that uh, you can see what it uh, looks like right side up. And all the brake stuff pretty much is uh, hanging underneath. There's about uh, maybe an eighth of an inch uh, between the lines and the axles, so they're not actually touching. And from the outside of the car, when, it's, uh, when the car is over it, you pretty much can't see any of the brake stuff. Most of the stuff around the outsides I've uh, painted black. And uh, the exception is possibly the lock nuts that lock the hangers to the frame. And uh, those you know, might show up, but uh, you know, give it a year of running and everything will be black anyway. So one other thing I should mention is the cylinder bore. Uh, just, just to give you a reference uh, starting point, the uh, cylinder bore is 7 eighths of an inch on these. And that's just what you know, I've found works on my train at the pressures that I run at. 
And of course, when you get a larger bore, you, you are multiplying your pounds per square inch by how many inches your bore is. And so you can increase the strength that way, or you can increase the, the pressure in your line, you know, or a combination of both. I originally inherited some trucks that had this setup on it with that sized brake. They worked well for me. The brakes stopped very quickly, but they didn't lock up. So I said, great, that's what I'm going to keep using. So I kept buying the 7 8 inch bore cylinders. Uh, they do make them in other sizes. If you have heavier or lighter equipment, your mileage may vary. And that's all. Thank you for looking.